the Enchanted Ring. Once upon a time there lived a young man named Rosamond, who was as good and handsome as his elder brother, Bramintho, was ugly and wicked. The mother detested her eldest son, and had eyes only for her youngest. This excited Bramintho's jealousy, and he invented a horrible story in order to ruin his brother. He told his father that Rosamond was in the habit of visiting a neighbor who was the enemy of the family, and betraying to him all that went on in the house, and was plotting with him to poison their father. The father flew into a rage and flogged his son till blood came. Then he threw him into a prison and kept him for three days without food, and after that he turned him out of the house and threatened to kill him if he ever came back. The mother was miserable and did nothing but weep, but she dared not say anything. The youth left his home with tears in his eyes, not knowing where to go, and wandered about for many hours till he came to a thick wood. Night overtook him at the front of the great rock, and he fell asleep on a bank of moss, and lulled by the music of a little brook. It was dawn when he woke, and he saw before him a beautiful woman seated on a grey horse, with trappings of gold, who looked as if she were preparing for the hunt. "'Have you seen a stag or some deer hounds go by?' she asked. "'No, madam,' she added. Then she added, You look unhappy. Is there anything the matter? Take this ring. Make with, make with you, which will make you the happiest and most powerful of men, provided you never be make a bad use of it. If you turn the diamond inside, you will become invisible. If you turn it outside, you will become visible again. If you place it on your little finger, you will take the shape of the king's son, followed by a splendid court. If you put it on your fourth finger, you will take your own shape. Oh, okay. Great figure. Then the young man understood that it was a fairy who was speaking to him. <laughs> and when she had finished, she plunged into the woods. The youth was very impatient to try the ring and returned home immediately. He found the fairy had spoken the truth, and that he could see and hear everything, while himself was unseen. It lay with him to revenge himself, if he chose, on his brother, without the slightest danger to himself. And he told no one but his mother of all the strange things that had befallen him. Afterwards, he put the enchanted ring on his little finger, and appeared as the king's son, followed by a hundred fine horses and guards and officers, all richly dressed. His father was much surprised to see the king's son in his quiet little house, and he felt rather embarrassed, not knowing what the proper way to behave on such a grand occasion. Then Rosamond asked him how many sons he had. Two, he replied. I wish to see them, said Rosamond. Send for them at once. I desire to take them both to court, in order to make them their fortunes. The father hesitated, and then answered, Here is the eldest, whom I have honored to present you to your highness. But where is the youngest? I wish to see him too, persisted Rosamond. He is uh, not here, said the father. I had to punish him for a fault, and he has run away. Then Rosamond replied, You should have shown him what was right, but not have punished him. However, let the elder come with me, and as for you, follow these two guards who will escort you to a place that I will point out to them. Then the two guards led off the father, and the fairy of whom you have heard found him in the forest, beat him with a golden birch rod, and cast him into a cave that is very dark and deep, where he lay enchanted. Lie there, she said, till your son comes to take you out again. Dang. 
Meanwhile, the son went to the king's palace and arrived just when the real prince was absent. He had sailed away to make war on a distant island, but the winds had been contrary, and had been shipwrecked on an unknown shore and taken captive by savage people. Rosamond made his appearance at court in the character of the prince, whom everyone wept for as lost, and he told them that he had been rescued at the point of death by some merchants. His return was a signal for great public rejoicings, and the king was so overcome that he became speechless, and did nothing but embrace his son. The queen was even more delighted, and fetes were ordered over the whole kingdom. One day this false prince said to his real brother, Ramantho, you know that I brought you here from your native village in order to make your fortune, but I have found out that you are a liar and that your deceits have been the cause of all your troubles with your brother Rosamond. He is in hiding here, and I desire that you shall speak to him and listen to his reproaches. Fermento trembled at these words, and flinging himself at the prince's feet, confessed his crime. That is not enough, said Rosamond. It is to your brother that you must confess, and I desire that you shall ask for his forgiveness. He will be very generous if he grants it, and it will be more than you deserve. It is in my anteroom, where you shall see him at once. I myself will retire to another apartment as to leave the two of you alone. Ramento entered, as he was told, into the anteroom. Then Rosamond, changing the ring, passed into the room by another door. Ramento was filled with shame as soon as he saw his brother's face. He implored his pardon and promised to atone for all his faults. Rosamond embraced him with tears and at once forgave him, adding, I am in great favor with the king. It rests with me to have your head cut off or to condemn you to make past the reminder of your life in prison. But I desire to be as good to you as you have been wicked to me. Pimento, confused and ashamed, listened to his words without daring to lift his eyes or to remind Rosamond that he was his brother. After this, Rosamond gave out that he was going to make a secret voyage to marry a princess who lived in a neighboring kingdom, but in reality, he only went to see his mother and we had told all that had happened to his court, giving her the same time the money that she needed, for the king allowed him to take exactly what he liked. Though he was always careful not to abuse his permission. Just then a furious war broke out between the king, his master, and the sovereign of the adjoining country, who was a bad man, and one that never kept his word. Rosamond went straight for the palace of the wicked king, and by means of his ring he was able to present it all the councils and learnt all their schemes, so that he was able to forestall them and bring them to naught. He took the command of the army which was brought against the wicked king and defeated him in a glorious battle, so that peace was at once concluded on conditions that were just for everyone. Henceforth the king's one idea was to marry the young man to the princess, who was the heiress of the neighboring kingdom and, besides that, was as lovely as the day. But one morning, while Rosamond was hunting in the forest, where, for the first time he had seen the fairy, his benefactress suddenly appeared before him. Take heed, she said to him in severe tones, that you do not marry anybody who believes you to be a prince. You must never deceive anyone. The real prince, whom the whole nation thinks you are, will have to succeed his father, and... That is just and right. Go and seek him at some distant island. I will send you winds that will swell your sails and bring you to him. Hasten to render this service to your master, and although it is against your own will and ambition, and prepare, like an honest man, to return to your natural state. If you do not do this, you will become wicked and unhappy, and I will abandon you to all your former troubles. Rosamond took these wise counsels to heart. He gave out that he had undertaken a secret mission to a neighboring state and embarked on board a vessel. 
the winds carrying him straight to the island where the fairy had told him he would find the real prince. This unfortunate youth had been taken captive by a savage people who had kept him to guard their sheep. Rosamond, becoming invisible, went to seek him amongst the pastures where he kept his flock, and covering him with his mantle, he delivered him out of the hands of his cruel masters and bore him back to the ship. Other winds sent by the fairies swelled the sails, and together the two young men entered the king's presence. Rosamond spoke first and said, You have believed me to be your son. I am not he, but I have brought him back to you. The king, filled with astonishment, turned to his real son and asked, Was it not you, my son, who can conquered my enemies and with such a glorious peace? Or is it true that you have been shipwrecked and taken captive, and that Rosamond here has set you free? Yes, father, replied the prince. It is he who sought me out in my captivity and set me free. And to him I owe my happiness in seeing you once more. It was he, not I, who gained the victory. The king could hardly believe his ears. But Rosamond turned the ring, appeared before him in the likeness of the prince. And the king gazed distractedly at the two youths who seemed both to be his son. Then he offered Rosamond immense rewards for his service, which he refused, and the only favor the young man would accept was that of the post of the court, which should be conferred to his brother Barantho. For he feared for himself the changes of his fortune, the envy of mankind, and his own weakness. His desire was to go back to his mother and his native village and to spend his time cultivating the land. One day, when he was wandering through the woods, he met the fairy, who showed him the cavern where his father was imprisoned, and told him the, what words he must use in order to set him free. He repeated them joyfully, for he had always longed to bring that old man back and make his last days happy. Rosamond thus became the benefactor of his family, and had the pleasure of doing good to all those who wished him evil. As for the court to whom he had rendered such services, he was asked was the freedom to live far from its corruption, and to crown all, fearing that if he kept the ring he might be tempted to use it in order to gain his lost place in the world. He made up his mind to restore it to the fairy. For many days he sought her up and down the woods, and at last he found her. I want to give you back, he said, holding out the ring, a gift as dangerous as it is powerful, for I am fear of using it wrongfully, and I shall never feel safe till I have made it impossible for me to leave my solitude and satisfy my passions. While Rosamond was seeking to give the ring back to the fairy, Bermento, who had failed to learn any of the lessons from the experience, gave way to all his desires, and tried to persuade the prince lately become the king, to ill-treat Rosamond. But the fairy, who knew all about everything, said to Rosamond, when he was imploring her to accept the ring, Your wicked brother is doing his best to poison the mind of the king towards you, and to ruin you. He deserves to be punished, and he must die. But in order that he may destroy himself, I shall give him the ring. Rosalind wept at these words, and then asked, What do you mean by giving him the ring as a punishment? He will only use it to persecute anyone, and to become master. Same things, answered the fairy, often a healing medicine to one person, and a deadly poison to another. Prosperity is the source of all evil, and to a naturally wicked man. If you wish to punish a scoundrel, the first thing you must do is to give him power. You will see that with this rope he shall soon hang himself. Wow. Having said this, she disappeared and went straight to the palace, where she showed herself to Bramento, under the guise of an old woman covered with rags. She at once addressed him with these words. I have taken this ring from the hands of your brother, to whom I had lent it, and by its help he covered himself with glory. Now I give it to you, and be careful what you do with it. <laughs> Bermento replied with a laugh. 
I should certainly not imitate my brother, who is foolish enough to bring back the prince instead of reigning in his place. And he was so good as his word. The only use he made of the ring was to find out family secrets and betray them, to commit murders and every sort of wickedness, and to gain wealth for himself unlawfully. All these crimes, which could be traced to nobody, filled the people with astonishment. The king, seeing so many affairs, public and private exposed, was at first as puzzled as anyone. Dobermento's wonderful prosperity and amazing insolence made him suspect and the enchanted ring became his property. In order to find out the truth, he bribed a stranger just arrived at court, one of a nation with whom the king was always at war, and arranged that he was to steal in the knights to Brianto and offer him untold honors and rewards if he would betray the state's secrets. <laughs> Brianto promised everything and accepted at once the first payment of his crime boasting that he had the ring which rendered him invisible, and that by means he could penetrate into the most private places. But his triumph was short. Next day he was seized by orders of the king, and his ring was taken from him. He was searched, and on him were found the papers which proved his crimes, and though Rosamond himself came back to the court to entreat his pardon, it was refused. So Barmento was put to death, and the ring had been more than fatal to him than had been useful in the hands of his brother. To console Rosamond for the fate of Barmento, the king gave him back the enchanted ring, as a pearl without price. The unhappy Rosamond did not look upon it in the same light, and the first thing he did on his return home was to seek the fairy in the woods. Here, he said, is your ring. My brother's experience has made me understand many things that I had not known before. Keep it. It has only led to his destruction. Uh, without it, he would be alive now, and my father and mother would not be in their old age, be bowed to the earth by the shame and grief. Perhaps he might have been wise and happy if he had never had the chance of gratifying his wishes. You know, how dangerous it is to have more power than the rest of the world. Take back your ring, and all the ill fortune seems to follow all on whom it, you bestow it. I will implore you, as a favor to yourself, that you will never give it to anyone else who is dear to me. 